Good morning. This is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And I'm down here on the lower part of my 18 acres where about 10, 15 years ago, I cleared the land and built this one room log cabin and built this pond behind me. That's been the feature of many different episodes. But today I wanna to come back and do a look at antlions one more time. I did a feature on them about a year ago and today, I, or yesterday, I discovered a virtual antlion city. And I stopped and watched them, which is something I want you guys to do, is really observe nature around you. And I was just amazed watching them build these antlion pits. So today's episode is about antlions revisited, but I'm gonna focus on how they build these traps how they capture and kill their prey, and why they can catch and kill things much larger than themselves. So stay tuned for this episode on the ferocious antlions. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's to make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes in terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So I'm down here at my pond, and over here on the right, I have a gazebo that I built to hang out in. You can find antlion pits underneath the gables of buildings, sheds, barns, and houses. They like a place where the soil is relatively dry, somewhat protected from the sun, certainly protected from the rain. Um, other places where there's very, very sandy soil, you can find them almost anywhere. But here in the Appalachian Mountains in Virginia, they love this particular habitat right here. And here are numerous, numerous antlion pits. It's almost like an antlion city. Here's one, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. And this is a great place to just come and sit and watch. And this is one of the things that I want you to do, is go out in nature and stop for a moment and observe and you'll see some really really amazing things and so some of the things I observed I'm going to share with you today. So exactly what is an antlion? Well it's a ferocious larva of an insect. It's an insect predator as a larva and as an adult it's a winged organism that looks somewhat like a damselfly. They're in the order Neuroptera. And the winged adult feeds on, in the evening on maybe a little bit of nectar, and it's rarely ever seen. But this antlion larva is seen mostly by its cone-shaped traps that it built. The antlion larva has a stout body, a large head, and formidable sickle-shaped jaws that have tiny openings in them. And it loves to dig in the ground and move earth and build these cone, inverted cone-shaped traps. The other nickname for the larva is called doodlebugs because in areas where there's a lot of sandy soil, the doodlebugs can be seen wandering underneath the sand. And as they do, they disrupt the sand and leave a wandering pattern that looks like a doodle across the sand surface. And that's another good sign to say that, hey, there's doodlebugs in this area. So how do doodle bugs build these inverted cone traps? Well, they'll seek out a place with sandy, dry soil, and they will get underneath it and just start flipping it up in the air. And they're the masters at earth moving. They're the masters at building. Some of these cones are perfectly round, look just like a volcanic crater and you can see a hole right down in the center where he's lying in wait with his jaws. They'll start flicking and flicking and flicking and pushing earth upwards. So they'll start moving earth by flicking it upwards in the air over their backs and they'll continue to move in a circle. And here's a couple of antlions 
that are working now. And they're really, really cool to watch. And it just you have to just take some time and take a moment and find these pits and just wait and watch and you'll start to see a lot of stuff happen. So it really takes a lot of work to maintain these cone traps. There's a lot of earth moving going on here. And it's biologically expensive. In fact, some larvae take several years to develop because they're putting so much energy into making the cones that they don't have enough energy to grow and make it to the next molt. So their season or their lifespan can be extended over several years because of the biological cost of maintaining and building these cone traps. So, how do antlions kill their prey? <laughs> well, it's pretty gruesome. They will grab an unsuspecting ant or other insect or even a spider that falls down and slides down the sides of the pit to where the antlion is waiting. And then he'll seize it with these large sickle-shaped jaws. And the sickle-shaped jaws actually have pointed tubes sticking out that penetrate the exoskeleton of the organism it's captured. These tubes begin by injecting a venom that immediately paralyzes its prey. It then injects the prey with digestive enzymes that start to digest the organism from the inside out inside this exoskeleton. Once the body of the arthropod inside this exoskeleton has been digested, then it'll use these same tubes to suck out the nutrition and the juices, leaving just a dry, empty shell. And you can see here, uh, ant that was captured by one of the ant lions. You can see this spider that was captured by an ant lion. And both of these have gone the, through the process of envenomation, injection of digestion juices, and then sucking out those contents. And what's left is a lightweight empty shell that will eventually be flicked out of the hole, like this remaining ant right here. How is it that ant lions can capture prey that are many times larger than themselves? Well, of course, they have this uh, venom that they can inject in their prey, but they also have hairs all across their body, which they use to hang on to particles of sand and soil, which weigh them down and it can make their weight much greater than the prey. Also, nature in its perfection and millions of years of evolution, those hairs are pointing forward. So when the organism is trying to escape the clutches of the jaws of the antlion, it is pulling against these forward-facing hairs that are grabbing onto the dirt and soil around it. So the prey has really very little, little chance to survive. Well, thanks for watching Nature at Your Door. I just looked over to the left here where I'm by these antlions and I've seen some soil being tossed up in the air. So I'm gonna go and take a closer look at those. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and if you like what I do, I hope you will subscribe. Send me questions. I love interacting with my viewers and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door on Antlions.